This is not something I was expecting to check out on the channel anytime soon, but it's called the DJI Cellular Dongle 2. It works for both the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. And what it allows us to do is to connect up a 4G enabled SIM card into our drones to get even more consistent, reliable range. This is the DJI Cellular Dongle 2, and it allows you to connect up a SIM card to access the 4G network to enhance your range with either one of these drones, either the DJI Air 3 or the DJI Mini 4 Pro. The thing that's really cool about this is if you have the Air 3, you can actually install it directly into the body of the unit itself. So you pull out the battery like so, and then underneath here, there are some little screws that you can loosen, literally just under here like so. And once you've loosened them, it will reveal the spot where you can actually install the module into the body of the drone. Here are the two screws here to loosen up this piece on the Air 3. Amazingly enough, this has been here the whole time and I guess no one really knew about it because it was hidden and we had no idea that this was a thing. But you can loosen these screws and then once they're loosened, uh, the screws don't come out. They're kind of like held into place by the body and then the piece on top, the little plastic sheet, I guess you would call it, loosens like so, and then you can just literally take that off. So there we go, so that whole piece comes off like so, it says DJI, that's all you have to know about that, that's how it's connected. You can see the screws will stay in here so you don't have to worry about losing them, which is very handy. Mounting the dongle into the Air 3 is very simple, like I said there are the included 4G antennas here, so you just plug them into place. They can kind of face away from each other, which makes it nice and easy. So you just plug them in facing the opposite way. This can actually be quite fiddly, I've found. I've found that this in itself can be very fiddly to disconnect that, so that's just something to keep in mind. But you can see you get a little bit of wiggle room here, so you can pull it out to adjust it. You then push it back in, and the cables actually go, or the antenna goes into the body of the Air 3. From there, you just kind of angle it so that you can plug it into the USB-C. So once it's lined up and angled, it then clicks into place like so. And then from there, you would just put the cover on top, screw it back into place, and no one would know any different. But inside of the body of the Air 3, you have a 4G dongle, basically, that allows you to increase the range that your drone can get, and uh, also, just the stability as well, especially if you're in the range of 4G, it's just gonna improve your range overall. For this mounting rig, like I said, you have to get this included Mini 4 Pro mounting rig. And so once you've opened that up, you would then line up the two antennas similar to the Air 3, plug them into place like so. Makes it a lot easier when you have that little plastic clamp there that's holding everything into place. You then slot it into place and you've got to be mindful of the antennas, the little cables, because you obviously don't want to bend them or cut them in any way. So once it's in place, it will push into place and sit nice and flush there. I find that this little clip here can be a little bit fiddly. You can see that it's in place, but there's a little bit of a gap. So you just got to make sure it's mounted. Obviously, this is going to be in the air flying, so you want to make sure it's all good. And then the cable that's included is extremely bendy. So you've just got to think, so it's going to be mounted underneath. So you want to plug in the cable and then you want that to come up, right? Because it's going to be mounted underneath and plugged in to the USB-C on the Mini 4 Pro. So then from there, we can turn the drone over. You basically just line it up like so. You can see it just kind of sits there. There's two little stoppers there that sit it perfectly where the landing legs are. It still reveals the auxiliary light there. And you can see it just kind of pokes out the bottom just a little bit like so. Now, once that's in place, you put the strap over the top. It's quite a stretchy strap, and then it just clips into place like so. And then that's how it looks. So then from there, the bendy USB-C cable plugs in like so, and then that's what it looks like. So to give you a better look of it, this is what it looks like when it's all mounted on. You can see it protrudes out the back a little bit. But in terms of the clearance, like it sits nicely on the ground and still gives you the clearance. There's no issues with like the camera touching the ground or the propellers being too close to the ground. 
it actually works quite nicely. Very similar process to what you're used to. Power on the drone, power on the controller. Everything's connected like I showed you before with the cellular dongle too. And then from there, I'll show you on the screen how to connect it up to the 4G network. On the controller, you'll see in the top right corner, it says 4G with a cross through it. So you tap on that and it will bring up the prompt that says connect remote controller to Wi-Fi network and make sure Wi-Fi connection is working. So that is one of the interesting decisions here. So you actually have to connect it up to your phone. Like you would want to hotspot it depending on what location you're in. So that also depends on what your 4G connectivity looks like or 5G connectivity in the area. Basically, I'm just going to turn on the personal hotspot on my phone like so. So I've just turned on the personal hotspot and then on the controller it will pop up with my hotspot, which is Dan's Tube TV. I've connected it up to the personal hotspot on my phone. And now once I return back to the DJI Fly application, you'll still have the, that X where it says 4G. But this time when you tap on it, it will now give us the option, as you see, to connect up. So it's already connected up and enabled the enhanced transmission. If I turn that off, for example, it will just say disabled for aerial network and ground network. But straight when I enable it, it will come up with the Wi-Fi network connected. Note, when using enhanced transmission, if you are connected to a mobile hotspot on your phone, make sure your phone has good mobile signal strength and avoid making or receiving calls during flight. It is recommended to switch your mobile hotspot band to 2.4 gigahertz. Stability of enhanced transmission uh, will be affected when Wi-Fi network connection is unstable or experiences interference. So that's one of the big things to be aware of. So we can now see in the top right, it does say 4G and it's got the bars there to let us know what the connection's like, but that's a huge thing to be aware of, right? Because if you're flying in a re remote area, the 4G or 5G isn't great, then that's heavily going to impact on the 4G flight, right? So you've just got to keep that in mind. If you're flying in a local area, like I'm down at a local um, soccer field basically or football field and you know like I'm in an area where there's a lot of 4G networks around there's a lot of awesome connection points I'm pretty much always on 5G on my phone around here so that 4G is going to be very stable in this kind of location so in a built-up area where you might be flying a little bit further and you want to make sure that your connection is bang on stable every single time perfect situation but if you're in a remote location you have to connect up via that hotspot and that's where you could have some issues. So we've got the screen recording going. So you can see in the top right corner, just keep an eye out for that 4G bar, right? Because what we're looking for here is we're just gonna push it a little bit and we're gonna see what the range is like. We're gonna see how it goes when you're flying in a situation like this. There's obviously a lot of other Wi-Fi networks and connections in this area because we're in a built up area here, but you know, we're using the 4G from a SIM card that I'm using, which is actually my business phone. And so far I'm seeing the bar for the 4G has dropped by one bar so far. It's down to three bars, it's back up to five. So that's the thing that's really cool here. When you're using your controller, you've always got to be like aware of which way you're facing with the controller, making sure the antennas are facing that way, making sure you've got no interference. But having something like this where you do have a stable, reliable, consistent 4G connection because you've obviously got a SIM card basically plugged into the drone, that's where you can get some really impressive range here. So, so far we're at about 500 meters. You know, I can kind of, I can see it in the distance over there. And yeah, the, the 4G is still bang on. It's five bars across the board, no interference. And you can see there's a lot of houses around. So perfect opportunity to have that interference but no issues at all. I'm not having any issues. And that's where this really does stand out. This kind of situation where you're flying in a relatively built up area, but you want to get that extra range. Uh, maybe you just want more of a stable connection is a great example uh, where you don't want to worry about like the interference from having, you know, just purely the controller sending the signals. Something like this is great because I'm getting that enhanced image transmission directly to the phone here. So we're at to 600 meters now and completely fine. Still got those five bars, no issues with it dropping out. You can see the feed isn't dropping out in any way. I haven't got any issues with like, you know, the, uh, the responsiveness of the sticks or anything like that. Even, you know, the responsiveness on the screen. It's all very reliable, you know, extremely reliable here. And you can see I've even got the drone coming back towards me now. So 
you know, I'm facing my back to the drone now just to see if we've got any sort of dropout or anything like that. But it won't be an issue because it's coming from the actual drone itself. It's connecting up to 4G networks all around the area here. So it's going to be completely reliable regardless of what situation you're in. And so perfect for this kind of scenario, right? You can see how flawless it is, how easy it is to connect up. Uh, like I said just before, you have to keep in mind that if you're flying in a remote area, you might have some issues, right? That's the thing you have to keep in mind here. But you can see no issues at all. So let's just chuck it into sports mode. We're gonna go the other direction now. We'll just get it to fly over this direction here. And we'll just see if we have any issues. I would not imagine that we would. It's flying at 15 meters per second, so extremely fast. And we're just going to get it to fly just in this direction, the opposite direction over here. Uh, I wouldn't imagine we're going to have any issues here. I've tested this before. It's been extremely reliable. So again, we're getting to that 500 meter mark and no issues at all. The 4G bars are perfect. They're all fully locked out at the five bars. No issues on either of them. I haven't even seen them drop out once yet. And we're still pushing it. It's getting to about 700 meters now. So the first thing is probably going to be the remote controller signal. You can see that RC bar has just gone down. The 4G bar is still very reliable and we're up to 870 meters now, nearly 900 meters. So it's right in the distance, no issues, perfect connection, regardless of what situation you're in. So this is a really cool add-on accessory, gives you so much versatility when it comes to flying in different locations. We're at max altitude now, but we're nearly 900 meters away, flying perfectly fine. You can see how many houses are around. You can see how much potential there would be here for interference, but nothing. Max altitude. 4G is perfectly fine right now, responding as exactly as you would expect it to respond. And so far it's been a flawless experience. So this is what it looks like with the mounting kit on. You can see it looks a little bit funky, especially on the Mini 4 Pro, just because it's such a small drone. Keep in mind that this will increase the weight of the drone to over 250 grams, so you have to be very mindful of that. Make sure you've got a spotter, make sure that you've got all your safety precautions in place. But just as I look up, this is what it looks like underneath. A very simple design, nice flexible cables. You can see it's very stable in flight, doesn't seem to affect the flight in any way. And even when you land it, you do have a little bit more clearance because it seems to stabilize the back of the drone as it lands. So this is a really cool add-on for your Air 3 and Mini 4 Pro. I love how it mounts internally to the Air 3 into the actual body of the Air 3, but you can swap it between the Air 3 or the Mini 4 Pro if you have both drones. It's really not that hard. Everything seems very heavy duty and reliable. Even just this mounting kit here, you know, when I initially felt it, it felt just like a hard plastic. I didn't really know what to expect. And you're always a little nervous when you're testing something new, but I've had no issues now. I've tested it in a bunch of scenarios. Very reliable, very consistent across the board. And as you saw, the 4G did not even drop below like four bars. It was very consistent. I think there was one point it dropped to three bars, but then went straight to four, then straight to five. And reliably, it was consistent across the board. So. Definitely well worth looking into the DJI Cellular Dongle 2 for the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3.